In a previous video, we established our first Active Directory domain controller. In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to add additional Windows 2022 Active Directory domain controllers to your environment. Let's take a quick review about Active Directory domain services. The whole purpose of Active Directory is to create that centralization of authentication, authorization, and security policy. We learned last time that we need at least one domain controller to establish that root domain. However, today we're going to go over the steps on adding an additional domain controller for the purpose of high availability. We want to make sure that our domain is always up and available for all of our clients. We're going to go through the promotion process for the server and choose to add an additional domain controller to an existing domain. What is our network going to look like? Well, in the previous video, we created server A. That's our first domain controller. In this video, we're going to create server B. Notice both servers are on the 192.168.1 network. Well, let's jump in and get started. Okay, I'm signed into server A, and let's take a look at the server's setup. We can verify the server A is on the domain.local. It is a domain controller, and its IP address is 192.168.1.1. If I launch the Active Directory Users and Computers console, you can see here that server A is a domain controller. Let's go ahead and switch over to server B. I'll go ahead and sign in as a local administrator. And this is because our server B is still on a workgroup. We're going to need to apply an IP address, change the computer name, and join the, the domain. We can do that from server manager. First thing I'll do is I'll, I'll assign it an IP address. Let's get to the properties of the Ethernet card, properties of IP version 4, and let's give it an IP address that's within our subnet. I'll do 192.168. 1.2. Subnet mask is going to be a 24-bit prefix, so that'll be 255.255.255.0. As far as the DNS server, we only have one on our network, and that's server A, 192.168.1.1. And this is important because when we try to join the domain, we have to be able to find the domain via DNS. I'll click OK. Hit close. Close this screen. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the name of the computer. I'll click on this link, hit the change button, and let's call it server B. This will require a reboot. We'll click OK, close, and go ahead and restart now. Okay, let's go ahead and sign back in as a local administrator. Next thing is to do is to join the domain. Let's go back to the left here on local server and click on this workgroup link. I'm going to click the change. Now we'll select the name of the domain. In this test lab, we called it domain.local. Of course, the name of your domain depends on how you created that first Active Directory root domain. Click OK. We're prompted for credentials. We need an account that has access and permissions to be able to join the domain. This is our test lab. Right now, all we have is this domain administrator account. So I'll type in domain backslash administrator. The name domain here is actually the name of my domain. Put in the password and click OK. By the way, when you're trying to join the domain, you'll have one of three results. Either A, you'll be able to successfully join the domain, or B, you might get an error message saying couldn't locate the domain. That might be one of two reasons. You might want to check your actual spelling of the domain you're trying to join, but you also may want to check your IP configuration. If you forgot to put the IP address correctly, or you're pointing to the wrong DNS information, or if you're pointing to the wrong DNS server, that will result in a cannot find the domain error. The third error message that's possible is you put in the wrong credentials, or use credentials that do not have permissions to, to join the domain. So in this case, we did provide the correct information and we were able to join the domain. This is going to require a reboot. Let's click OK, OK, close, and restart now. Let's go on and sign in again, but this time we're going to sign in with a domain account. We can use the domain administrator to sign in. So I'll select Other User.
choose the domain administrator password, and we'll get a new profile. Okay, so Server Manager automatically opens up. We're not too concerned about these, these five services that didn't start. They should be delayed services. These aren't required to start for the promotion of the domain controller. So I'm not going to worry about them right now. To add a new domain controller to an existing domain, we're going to go to Manage, Add Roles and Features, and click Next. We're going to do a role-based or feature-based installation. Click Next. We're going to do this on Server B. We're going to click Next and choose Active Directory Domain Services. Of course, additional features are recommended. We'll hit Add Features. These features are typically the tools that will be required to be able to manage the domain. We'll click Next. No additional features required. Just click Next. A summary that we saw before in the previous video. We'll go ahead and click Next. And install to proceed. As you recall from the last video, the first part of the installation is copying over the files and getting the domain services ready. The second part is the promotion process. This is where we'll actually choose to join an existing domain. Okay, we're ready to proceed to promote this server to a domain controller. Let's click on this link. In our last video, we created a root domain called domain.local, and we did so by choosing adding new forest. This time, we're going to say add a domain controller to an existing domain. We'll click the first option. The name of the domain we're going to add this domain controller to is domain.local. And we're going to use the current user, which is our domain administrator, to be able to proceed with the operation. Of course, the administrator account has the permissions necessary to, to join a new domain controller to an existing domain. Click on Next. In this case, we have the option on whether we want to add another DNS server to the environment and whether or not we want the server to be a global catalog server. Generally, it's good practice to have all your domain controllers participate as global catalog servers as well. Whether or not you want the second domain controller to be a domain name system server is up to you. We can go ahead and accept this. It's good to have more than one DNS server in our environment. Let's go ahead and give this server also a DSRM password. As we talked about before, this special password is used with a, when you have a failed domain controller. You can boot up with this DSRM mode and run additional utilities against your Active Directory database. Hit Next. There's no delegation for DNS in our environment. We're going to go ahead and click Next. If you want to specify any additional replication options, you can at this time. We're fine with allowing us to, to replicate from any domain controller in the environment. Of course, we only have Server A as an additional domain controller. So either selection would be appropriate. Hit Next. Again, this is a test VM. We don't have additional volumes on our server. If this was a production Active Directory server, you most definitely would want your server to have multiple hard drives for better performance and for easier maintenance, especially with backups. Hit Next. You can review and click Next. Just as when we set up our first domain controller, we have to go through some prerequisite checks. We know that these two, first two warnings are OK to proceed. Everything looks OK as all prerequisite checks have passed. Let's go ahead and install. The Active Directory process will prepare this server to become a domain controller. Additional partitions and replication will occur during this process. Okay, it's time to reboot this server. I'll just click close and wait for the restart. Okay, we're ready to sign in. Notice that we no longer have the ability to log in as a local administrator. We can now sign in as the domain administrator. Now, whether you're on server A or server B, You'll notice that both servers are now functioning as domain controllers. We can actually check that from server A. Let me go ahead and refresh the domain controllers OU and server A. 
Notice here that server A and server B are now both domain controllers in this domain. This is the first step in developing a highly available solution for your Windows network. If either of these servers fail, your domain will still be functional and your clients will know how to find an online domain controller using DNS. Well, this is the end of our video today. Hope you enjoyed watching. Please take a moment to like, subscribe, and comment below. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you again.